This is the guidance system. It's the same as this part on the Ajax. This one's considerably larger, and this is for the Nike Hercules. Uh, inside of here would be all the avionics, the things that assist the missile in its flight. So two antennas to receive signals from the radar, and then two antennas to broadcast information back to the missile tracking radar, tell the radar what the missile's doing. The, these all have to be lined up and make contact before the missile is launched. Before the missile's launched in a Nike Hercules defensive system, the missile has to know where it's going, which direction, but in degrees, whether it's going north, south, east, or west, and at what altitude the target is at. Other, any other information and slight guidance changes can be made when the missile's in flight. However, a Nike Hercules flies at about 2,400 miles per hour. So most of the decisions have to be made before the missile leaves the ground. And then all of that is done in here. This is 1960s technology. Um, no transistors. It's all uh, big stuff, like an old-time TV. Has vacuum tubes and that kind of stuff in it. It's a Gleiston, huh? I don't know what is this Rayton. Uh, I'm not sure what it's Raytheon is. Yes, it's probably it's the a, Gleiston. Uh, yeah, it could. Yeah, so. Then the guidance system is brought from the assembly building into the warhead building. The missile rocket body, the engine and stuff for the missile would be placed in this building behind it. The warhead, which would come out of this container, and this would normally be a white skin. We paint these and put all the information about it. This is the warhead access panel. And then this is actually a warhead assembly inside, minus all the triggering devices and the fail safes and all of that kind of stuff. Those would all be plugged in here. So it's rolled out of its container, and this collar is removed, and there's a circle of bolts which bolt right into the back of this. Then when you go to the back of the warhead section, that's where you would mate it with the missile rocket motor. Now, originally, the Nike Hercules also had liquid fuels in the main missile body. And then about the time that I came here in the 60s, late 60s, they had changed to solid fuels. So the whole Nike Hercules was all a solid rocket propellant. All of the fuels were made for it at Morton Thiokol in Utah. And the missile system itself was built by Western Electric, the phone company. So uh, that's kind of unique. Uh, they were the ones who could do the electronics and have these basic computers that could calculate these speeds and distances that it took for this weapon system. This one is this one. Uh, this on the table is a test of the missile guidance system. This would go on a pole on the missile tr over by the tracking vans, and this was kept in the launcher area in the top of the launch control van. And this would generate signals and flight characteristics so that a drill could be run and you could work everything in the system, all the electronics and all the radars and all the communications, without actually launching the missile. So this would simulate the flight of a missile from the launcher to the de point of detonation, the intercept point. And this would be what the electronics are in the backside of the missile guidance system. And this one is of particular interest to me. This is the kind of electronics that would be in a Nike Hercules. If you go back to one of the future uh, previous pictures of the guidance system. In the back, you'll see that they had these little colored test points on it. But the orange things in this photo are capacitors. And the black things are resistors. And they're about the size of a finger. Now you could get an entire computer into that type of thing. But in the 60s, this is the only type of circuitry that could withstand the accelerations of this missile system, which is like Mach 3.5, 3.5 times the speed of sound.